It's Sunday morning with Mark Sainsbury. It's business time now, and of course, the uh, the main man whenever we're discussing those sort of things is the fabulous Dr. Harold Hillman. Uh, he's a leadership coach, author, celebrity speaker. He is, of course, the author of The Imposter Syndrome. It was a big success as a business book. But you don't have to buy the book. You can just listen to Harold here on Radio Live every Sunday morning. Good morning, Harold. Good morning, Mark. Look, it was interesting. I saw a stat this week. It was about the use of websites. And it said 60%, I think of it was, may have been higher, of, uh, of uh, small and medium New Zealand businesses don't have a website. Wow. And then it started making me think about, well, what is a small business? Yeah. And, and what you were going to talk about today is the difference between a small business owner and an entrepreneur. And an entrepreneur, there's a tendency to just push those two terms together. And so sometimes when we, um, we think about someone who's launching their own business and it qualifies as a small business, which in New Zealand is anything um, under 19 employees or so. And um, so 97% of New Zealand enterprises are small businesses. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're being run by entrepreneurs. So this thing around being an entrepreneur is a different beast. It's a more intense focus on an opportunity and somebody who dives head first with full force into a business venture, assuming a certain degree of risk, but also, you know, this, this sense of confidence that they have typically persuades a lot of people to invest and to get on board. So there's a different edge associated with entrepreneurs. So success is not necessarily a uh, requirement to be an entrepreneur because uh, given the if you take a risk yeah you're going to be going to be prepared to fail i guess that's right there is a if you if you think about something that differentiates an entrepreneur from what you might call your typical corporate manager there is this sense of um an entrepreneur as being you know bigger risk takers they have greater comfort with ambiguity and they don't mind failing mark so there's this 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 mental model that entrepreneurs entrepreneurs have that you know there's going to be three or four failures behind every success and that if you are too afraid of failure uh, you probably aren't going to do well in terms of pushing boundaries and exploring new new opportunities so I mean we're used to hearing the ideas of entrepreneurs who set up something themselves to try and make a go of it yeah. what about if you've got a business uh, entrepreneurial types the sort of people you'd want to have on board. It would be good to just, just think about entrepreneurial types. Another common characteristic is that they don't tend to lock themselves into status quo. They have the they have this attribute that causes them to push against sort of the grain, if you will. So it is a certain personality type. Corporate managers tend to be more about buttoning things down and stabilizing, whereas entrepreneurs tend to be a little bit more disruptive. And you want to, if you're running a business, even if it's not a small business, but you're running a business for profit, you want somebody on that team who is not going to be bound by status quo and has an attitude where, look, we need to, we, you know, we need to think differently about how we're going to um, take opportunity with this particular market. Now, you know, Harold, there's probably people are sitting listening to this this morning and they're wondering, hmm, am I an entrepreneur? What does it take? So what are the... What are the what are the sort of the hallmarks or what are the characteristics that yeah. make someone an entrepreneur? And, the, and you know, there are mark. It doesn't necessarily correlate with intelligence. And there's a con meaning that C students often are more entrepreneurial than A students. Um, and it, it doesn't correlate with type A, a common perception that you have to be sort of extremely hyper uh, or or high drive. What you really would want to have as an entrepreneur is a certain degree of tenacity. So there's a, a an idea of being able to push through and deal with obstacles along the way. People are very motivated when they see someone not only with tenacity, but also passion, not just for making dollars, but a, around that sense of a bigger purpose. Uh, entrepreneurs tend to have a greater tolerance for ambiguity. As a matter of fact, some people say that's the biggest one, that they aren't afraid of fear. Uh, a sense of self-belief, a strong vision in what they want to accomplish. Accomplish, and one that I mentioned before, Mark, which is rule breaking. Entrepreneurs typically are the ones who ask 
for forgiveness rather than permission. Hey, look, just finally, Harold, if you if you don't already have those skills, are they are they skills or characteristics you can develop yourself? Can you can you train yourself to become entrepreneurial? Yeah, there's a there's a belief that a lot of what I just talked about, Mark, is attitude, and there's some folks who believe that that's locked in fairly early. What I would say is, um, you absolutely can get people's attention around. It's it's sort of like what you recognize and what you reward and what you promote people on the basis of. And if you're promoting them on the basis of disrupting the status quo, people will, you know, sort of lock in. But I do honestly believe that there are some people who just are sort of hardwired that way. And um, they have this drive and tenacity and they can just get people on board behind them. Hey, good on you. Well, look, I'm going to put you in the entrepreneurial category, uh, Harold, because you display most of those qualities. Dr. Harold Hillman, and look, check out his website, www.sigmoidcurve.com. You can also follow him on Twitter, at Dr. Harold Hillman. We'll catch you next week, Harold. All right, Mark. Take care.